You're now listening to the Palmetto Dugout Show, hosted by State Director Sammy Esposito, Associate Scouts Drew Stewart and Sean Smith, that discuss all things related to amateur baseball in South Carolina. Here are your hosts. Welcome to episode 32 of the Palmetto Dugout Show. I'm Drew Stewart here with Sammy Esposito. What's going on, Coach? Coach, how are we doing today? Doing all right? Doing good. I, th- I think we're both uh, sitting here on this podcast watching uh, a little college baseball. Um, as I have it on my iPad currently with the Tiggers. Um, Cox underway here. A little, little college baseball, a little college basketball going on, right? You got the NCAA tournament. Yep, got, got a lot of action. We got, got some conference got some... plays cranking up in baseball. NCAA tournament time. Good time to be a fan of sports. And we got right? USA baseball going on too, Coach. A lot of excitement over the weekend with USA baseball. You know, I think if you're an average fan, you were so high on USA and then you hated them all and then you were back on the bandwagon all of a sudden after a grand slam. So it's a lot of fun. A lot of hey, those those World Baseball Classic games are fun to watch. The excitement, the the crowds, the atmosphere, teams pulling for for their country. It's a uh, makes that's what baseball is about. It makes it fun. That's what it's, what it's all about. It's a show for the people, Coach. It's all about um, the people. You know what I mean? All about the people. Um, so we'll we'll start off on a serious note here. Um, first of all, prayers to Asher Goss and his family um, as they go through some uh, medical situations, former Future Game alum, as well as a great player in the state. Um, so we want to send prayers out to him, as well as parents, family, and as well as the Lawrence baseball um, team. We hope that he gets better very soon. Um, so with that kind of starting us off here, um, player of the week emails have went out. Um, so coach, you want to, you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, we've gotten, uh, we, we switched it up this past week to kind of get it into the, uh, the high school coaches, uh, emails a little bit sooner. Um, so it went out, we've, we've already gotten a good amount of responses back. Um, we're going to, we'll run our player of the week story on Tuesday, uh, player and pitcher of the week. And then, you know, the other players that uh, have performed well over the week will we'll pile them into a diamond note story that will go out on Wednesday. So we got a lot better turnout this week with coaches kind of, you know, see, getting a chance to see those emails, seeing a bunch of the socials that, that have gone out to kind of remind them. You know, it, it, heck, at the end of the day, you know, this this deal, this story we're putting out is, is really for – for these schools and these, these high school coaches to be able to pub their players for uh, all the good that they have done, you know, in the, the week of the week prior, you know, whether it's on the mound or with the bat or right. Just in general, you know, maybe a guy, you know, hit 400 on the week and, and pitched, you know, five innings, you know, four hit baseball, whatever it is, and, you know, really helped their team win or made some big moments. So it's just an opportunity to kind of, to kind of give those players some love and, and those programs some love. So we'll get those stories coming out here soon. And uh, we appreciate the, the turnout this week with those high school coaches being able to put that, put that information in. Yeah, and again, if you are not seeing those emails, please let us know. Right. I mean, we, uh, we, we've already had people reaching out to us on social media this morning and, and letting us know. So if you are not seeing those emails, you know, shoot us a DM, email me, let me know. We'll get you that that uh, that form to fill out to to get that that information to us. Yeah, no doubt. No, the original player of the week here. Um, so not only will you get that, but you'll get probably the the best graphic from none other than uh, Mr. Blake Loria, um, who's helping us out That's a, a ton stud. here. Stud, yeah, coach. stud. I mean, he he's um, uh, best graphic guy in the state, coach. I, state that might be. I, I might go a little bit bigger. He might be right under the unicorn over there for PBR mm. Ohio. Um, because that guy has something else. But um, hey, get you get you a player of the week nomination, get you a great graphic. Um we also re- are gonna release every Sunday now um a tweet about what game should we come to. Um feel free to if you think there's a big game going on throughout this state, um uh, be sure to respond to that uh tweet and Instagram- Instagram, Facebook, it's all out there, and you may just see us there, um, depending on how how our schedules look, um, because we want to see those great players in the state of South Carolina um, throughout the whole entire state. Um, so that takes us over to we got we'll talk about three big games of the week, as you'll see this graphic um, come out as well, um, where we have eight games of the week. 
Uh, but let's get to our, our top three here. And coach, I think we're covering two or three of these. Um, first one is number seven, Lexington, and number five, River Bluff, in a series this week. Big one, coach. Big one. You know, it cranks up Monday, goes Monday, Wednesday, Friday here. They've already played one game against each other already in the uh, championship game of the Optera Solutions Invitational preseason tournament. It used to be the Nature Kim. Um, still throws me off with that name a little bit, but they played a tight one then. So they're going to be back at it uh, again this Monday. I believe it goes. Lexington Monday and Friday, and then at River Bluff on Wednesday. So uh, PBR South Carolina is planning, unless something weird happens, will be in attendance on Wednesday's game over there at River Bluff. So big time matchup, right? You got two uh, two of the better programs, you know, not only in the Midlands but in the state. You got two great coaches that have that have been at those helms for a long time and have done nothing but win. And, and they're also not only littered with just a good team, they're littered with talent across those boards. You got a bunch of guys that are. Committed to uh, Division One schools, you got a bunch of players that will soon be committed to school. So it's uh, it's kind of one of the bigger rivalries in this state, I would say. You know, two teams, you know, down the twenty minutes down the road from each other that have that big rivalry there in Lexington. So it'll be a, a fun one to see and, and see who shakes out at the end of the series on Friday. Yeah, no doubt. Always a good atmosphere there, um, and it's got some coach got some power twenty five implications in this Ooh. series. Um, as well as some, this could, this could decide a region championship in that region. Um, so a big series early in the year um, that's going to have some implications down the line as we get into farther in the season. Um, our second uh, big game of the week um, takes place at Floor Field on Thursday night, and it is Greenville and number 18, JL Man. Um, Coach Greenville's kind of come out of nowhere. Um, I believe they're like eight and one on the year. Um, they swept Powdersville. They've uh, they swept West, West Side this week. So some some big wins for Coach Galinsky and, and their squad. No doubt. They've uh, they've kind of I'm not gonna say come out of nowhere. Um, well, not out of nowhere, they, but yeah. You know, they they've kind of they've they big surprise out there. Obviously, they got the big horse, you know, Taylor Rabe going out there. Um, you know, they're they're number one guy, they're ace and committed to Ole Miss and, you know, we got a chance, you know, he was at, you know, he was a former future gamer as well a couple of years ago, was always a the big, strong, projectable right-hander that's making the jumps, they, upper 80s, low 90s, breaking balls, getting better, but they got a, a, a superstar freshman in the making, Jose Dubron. So it's, uh, catch might up some later. later. Hold on yeah, on that. yeah, I think we might get a little something later on him in there, but, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> They kind of got a good mix of of some young and old, and then Coach Kalinsky does a great job up there with them Red Raiders. So it's uh again another rivalry, cross town rivalry that we're talking about with with up there in the Greenville area with Greenville and JL Man, and uh, you know JL Man, I guess maybe you'd say he's going the opposite way of what we got Greenville going. We had them ranked pretty high, you know, and they got off to a tough start, but you know that happens, right? It happens in not only high school baseball but college baseball and. That's why, you know, you always talk about it's more of a marathon than a sprint. So exactly. it'll be fun. And I believe uh, PBR South Carolina will also be in attendance for that game as well on their the, floor field. The, so. the man, Austin Smith, will be in attendance at the man, floor field. The man. Well, he'll just yeah. hop out of school and cruise right over there. That's right. I know he, he can't wait to get there. Um, he Actually, he don't have to hop out of school. Is. I think they're on spring break, right? I believe he is. Um, I guess that's why he couldn't join us today. He's a, the vacation director. Uh, has taken his <laughs> vacation. To, he's taking his vacation to Folly Field today to watch the Gamecocks yeah. and the Dogs. Um, so, <laughs> hey, spring break is that time. Hey, when you're the vacation director, it is you know uh, you got to take those vacation days. You got to go on trips, or therefore you will not be the vacation director. That's right. That's, that's, that's his most important title. Um, <laughs> so that, that's going to be a great game, obviously, also with some Power 25 implications. Um, and then our third, maybe the biggest game in the state this week, um, it is number one, Oceanside, taking on number three, Somerville coach on Monday. That's going to be a big one. Um, a lot of heat between those two schools, um, not very far from each other. But nonetheless, there's a ton of talent on both sides. Um, in the dugouts for both of those squads. Um, I'm assuming, I don't know who's going to throw, but the way it's been shaping up for Oceanside, it'll look, it'll look to be uh, Jarnigan um, since he's thrown at that first part of the week. Um, they've gotten some big region wins. 
and some big non-conference wins against AC Florida last week. Somerville coach, they're, they're winning. They're winning. I mean, I think you hit on the head when you talked about talent. I mean, and star power, right? I mean, you got you got superstars on both teams. You know, you got some high profile Division One guys going to big time schools, and you got a bunch of you know highly ranked kids going in there, and and you know. Arguably, you know, Somerville has one of the best, you know, not only best hitters in the state, but best hitters in the country in PJ, PJ Morlando. Um, you know, and then I don't, you know, which way are they going to go on the mound? You know, is Messina going to go into there or is, you know, Davermini going to start or Amos? Where, how, you know, how, however Somerville rolls in there, they're going to have a really good arm matching up against them. So it's, you know, that that's going to be a big time game and kind of see how that one goes out and, you know, we know in that that Charleston area, Somerville area, there's not much. Uh, you know, one of the a lot of those teams want to get their licking over there with uh, Ocean Side. So it'll be it'll be a big one to, for those two teams to match up and see how that shakes out. And you know, you know, some people go, well, Ocean Side's a two A school. What's the matter? Well, you know, they got they they might be a two A school when it comes to the size of their school, but they got a you know a five eight you know talent type team so it, it that'll yeah. be a, a fun one to see how that one shakes up you know it, as you know implications of ultimately just kind of best team overall in the state not as much uh you know region wise or you know what's classification they are just overall for the top type type of team in the state yeah no doubt um that, that's going to be a Seems like Oceanside schedules all the, the top nine conference games of the year. Um, I know they got uh I'm trying to think, I think they play somebody else could do that. Well, they were, they're in the dominant rotation, obviously. Yep. So they'll get to play the stags and all of that, all of that group there. Um, so that's that's gonna be, I think they take TL Hannah too. Um, so that, that's another <laughs> big one coming up. Um, but three big games this week in this state, um, which all have power 25 implications, which we're gonna hop into. Um Coach, we've got some power 25 teams kind of, you know, we got we got a hill here. We got some going up the hill and some going down the hill. Um, so we'll kind of we'll kind of talk about some of those those teams that are are going up that proverbial hill. Um, and that we just talked about them, Greenville. Um, eight and one on the year. So look for them to make a push, coach. You obviously when Rave's on the mound, you're you could arguably be one of the better, best teams in the state at that point. Um They've got some younger guys stepping up, so they'll have some big games this week. Obviously, with JL Mans, we'll see how that does anything. Um, another team we we saw them at the Shipyard PBR Showdown. Coach, they've just gotten better, um, and that is the Ashley Ridge Foxes. Um, once again, striker on the mound probably could be the best team in the state um, because the the guys good. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really good. He's gonna beat. He's gonna beat almost everybody every single time he goes out of the mound. There, yes. you know. Now whether their team scores enough runs, well, that's a whole different story. But you know, he, he's gonna throw up his zeros. You you probably assume. Yeah, and they've already got big wins on the year. Took down Oceanside early. Um, got a win over James Island. Um, so hey, it might shoot on up these rankings, coach. Um. We'll see. Watch out. Watch yeah, out. No doubt. Yeah, the, the the rankings are fun, right? I mean, it's uh, yeah, it is. So some people, you know, we we kind of scratch some head scratchers ourselves when we do these, right? You just you never know. I mean, you look at you look at rankings, you know, across all college sports, high school, whatever it is, especially early in seasons. We've talked about this already, but you know, you you got whether teams, you know, live up to expectations or. You know, they weren't, you know, not much stuff expected to happen out of them. All of a sudden, they jump out of nowhere. You really never know, especially now you start to get into this point in time of the year, especially in high school wise, they're getting into week four or five of the season. They kind of kind of shake out and see where they're at, especially yeah. when they get into region play. Like, right, we've talked about this before. The, the region play, you start to get in a groove of playing similar type teams as you. You know, you might play in a preseason tournament, a really, really, really tough schedule. You know, and you come out of it, you know, 500 or a little bit of a game under 500. Does that mean you're not as good as somebody who won a few more? No, you just probably played a tougher schedule and it happens. Um, but, you know, you, you kind of get through this and you get into here and you kind of now it starts to shake it out, you know, and see who who's who's the better teams, you know, who's going to go up there. Right. You know, 
teams like like Lexington or River Bluff. Somebody's going to win that series yeah. this week. Does that mean but someone's not going to fall drastically due to losing it, that series? It would be different if one team sweeps the other team and there's just three blowouts. I highly yes. doubt that's going to happen. But you know, you you're probably not going to take a big falter in it because you lose that series, right? Just like in in college baseball, right? I mean. Ole Miss got swept by Vanderbilt this weekend. Does that mean Ole Miss is terrible and needs to be out of the top 25? No, Vanderbilt's a really, really, really good baseball team. So, you know, you it, it happens. You take a fall, you bounce back, but it, it kind of – it makes it fun and it makes for some fun uh, conversation when people are, you know, they 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 stick up for their teams, right? I mean, we've had some some Clinton fans that, that reach out and say they want their team in. Nations forward, it kind of reaches out and say, hey, where are we at now? You know, and, and again, we're talking about – uh, 14 to 18 year old kids playing baseball. It's very easy for them to have a, a great week and a bad week. So it's, <laughs> That's uh, right. it, it makes, it, it makes it fun to have this conversation. Now, some days we want to like wipe the slate clean and start over ourselves, but you know, it, you can't, we, you know, our stuff's hey, out there for the, we're here, we're here for, yeah, for bulletin board material. <laughs> That's why we're here. Um, you touched on two teams that had some big weeks last week with Nation Ford uh, taking the series from Clover Coach. Um, and then the Clinton Red Devils, who just seem like they don't lose. Um, <laughs> hey, Clinton, watch for Clinton and make a, a jump up on this board as well. Um, yeah. And then some two other teams who's had great years so far, Woodmont, um, who's who's winning some big games. Um, and then one that was, that was on the bubble last week um, bubble was teams. South Florence. Bubble team, South Florence with two big wins over Hartsville last week. They'll take on the Myrtle Beach Pirates this week, Coach. Um, so, hey, watch out. Might be some new faces, some new names, but we'll eventually get it right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll, uh, we might just clean all these off, delete everything, and we'll just say here's our final Power 25 at the end of the year when it's all said yeah. and make everybody happy. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to make somebody – somebody's still going to be mad. It's okay because we're going to rank one team number one, and we're going to go, well, our team won the state championship as well. So, so not everybody can be number one when it's yeah, all said and done. But, you know, it's it's all – it is what it is. It makes it fun to, to talk about it. But, yeah, it, it, it is – it's neat to see some of these teams that maybe you didn't know much about or we didn't know much about or whoever – you maybe weren't expecting much. All of a sudden, see them get on these streaks and – and get going on there or players stepping up that, you know, some, some young freshmen stepping up and making moves and helping their team win, or, you know, maybe a guy who hadn't got many cracks as a sophomore junior all of a sudden becomes a stud for a team as a senior and helps them win some games. So it makes, uh, it makes that special. And that's, what's great about sports. That's right. Yeah, well, uh, these power 25s will release again next weekend, coach. Um, release will be next Sunday. Um, so pay attention to that and see if there's some some movers in that 25 and see who's sitting outside on the bubble. March Madness on the bubble. Um, March Madness. It's crazy. Got those bubble teams going on. Um, so, hey, we got our – now we're going to hop to our PBRSC Bomb Squad of the Week. Make sure you keep tagging us in those so you can be featured because um, we're going to start to do some highlights as well um, through our various social media pages. Um, so you want to be able to be highlighted through our – Fantastic social media. Um, Bomb Squad of the Week this week goes to 2026 Greenville infielder Jose Dubrant, coach. Um, I want to say he had two home runs last week. Yeah. Um, the kid's killing it. <laughs> Wearing it out. Wearing it out, right? Usually you go, hi, oh, he's a freshman. Let's go after him. I don't know if you want to be – if you're saying that one right now. No. no you're going, he's... hey, let's pitch around him. <laughs> it might Let's be one of the breakers dangerous, on. one of the most dangerous hitters in that uh, Red Raider lineup there. Um, so, hey, he, he's going to get our PBR SC Bomb Squad of the Week. No play of the week um, because I don't think anybody has seen a play of the week so far out of the three of us. Um, so, hey, we'll be at two, four, six games this week. Um, so maybe one of us will catch one here soon. Um, I know me so. and you, the games we were at last week, there weren't many balls put in play. <laughs> so exactly. really, there weren't going to be many, um, many chances for some plays of the week. It was, uh, I had a one to nothing game in eight innings. So um, a lot of well, strikeouts. One nothing game in seven. <laughs> yeah. So we so. had a lot of strikeouts. We've, we've gotten one, you know, one of those coaches has sent back in. So 
Maybe one of those players is going to be in there for pitch of the week. Don't know yet. We got to go through the numbers. But yeah, we we didn't get between me and you. There probably was like maybe five balls put in play. I felt like yeah, over one that time. <laughs> but Austin made up for it in his one game between Greer and Wade Hampton. As he said, he sat there. He felt like for eight hours. Uh, so Austin, Austin's getting the short end of the stick here. As me and Sam are going to games for only an hour and a half, and then getting out yeah. of there. Um, Austin gets those three hour games. Um, hey, that's what happens when you when you start uh, scouting this year. Um, when you have we got to we got to got to put him in there and let him throw him yeah, in the fire. Yeah, he's getting broke in. So got to got to start off bumpy for him. Um, so hey. A lot of stuff going out on socials this week. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, um, and pay attention to all the social media accounts as all of three of us will be out this week at various games. Um, and if we miss a matchup, please let us know. We're here for the people, Coach. We're here for the all people. about the people. It's for, it's for the people. It's for the kids. I'm trying to you're trying to give the people what they want when it's all said and done. So it's, uh, yeah, we got a busy week. I, you know, we're trying to get this weather to warm back up, you know, but it's still be a little cool this week, a little cool. Put on your PBR, you know, beanie and jacket and go out. And, you know, I did, I, I, I will talk about this off air, but I did hear a bad report of a certain uh, PBR scout last year at a cold game that was, that was hiding um, behind the heater. Um, that other person's on the, on the call with us right now, <laughs> but I, well, <laughs> I had a had a parent tell me something about it that and the game I was at. <laughs> he's hiding behind. It. Oh boy, we got. <laughs> he's cold, coach. <laughs> and games go on. Game goes on. Games go on. And games go on. Oh, oh. So hey, <laughs> we're we gonna end this one. Um, so from all of us here at PBR South Carolina, have a great week.